over time and you know its effect you know A and B effects you know and you gotta know what's gonna happen afterwards also you know if you do swing through it you know every once in a while um, certain songs to me seem to be eternal but I don't know how eternal because you know we keep changing but it seemed to be pretty amazing I don't know why this song's in question, but it was the one with uh, Marshall Mathers, and it was, uh, We're the ones who made you. And I thought it was so good, it was an eternal song for me. You know, and it seemed like, you know, like if there was a G-force, you know, it's almost like a slalom, you know, on a bobsled, and it's like that ball or whatever that is rolling on this thing, you know, just totally, you know, like if it was a snowboarder, you know, or a surfer, just whoosh, just right in front of you, you know, and it's like something I could, you know, I can't really make it not eternal, you know, because it looks like it wants to last, you know, however, if I die, I just hope that it would be packaged into another form, but I wish it was the same form, you know, I mean, why the fuck would it change, probably because it's the element of change. And, uh, let's see what else. So we have reverse listening from rooms away. Um, also, you know, listen, um, with a fan, you know, and think about this, you know, when you're someone's fan, I mean, was the fan really a fanatic then, like in the old times, or was a fan actually something that does blow wind? Is a good question because I mean, why the fuck do we have fans if people are fans? And I'm sure it's been, you know, not debated enough. But play it with the fan, you know, and with static. Static. Um. Louder. So-called static. Louder. Than. Um. The song. You know, and also, you know, um, you know, when you listen to it with static, you know, you're going to have, you know, over it. When you have a fan, you have over it, you know, and you want it to be louder than the song. You want maybe about 15% song and maybe, you know, like 100% fan, you know, and just barely hear it over the top of it. Now, one thing I believe that is true is that some songs that I've heard so far actually do float, you know, because of the fan and the static. Because certain songs I remember, you know, actually kind of float along in my mind, but it seems to be something I'm picking up, like the radio broadcasting it now. You know, when I was five, <laughs> I remember when... I was, um, you know, I'd lay down, and I was in this room right here, and um, I had a uh, a bed over there, you know, and I'd sleep, and I had a fan over here by the window, and um, anyway, I'd listen to music on it, and sometimes it'd be country, sometimes it'd be rock music, and it was just like a little portable radio. That just kind of came with the fan, you know, and it was a really good song. And I know, you know, Willie Nelson was a really good artist, but I'm sure, you know, he'd only be bewildered by it and probably wouldn't have actually intentionally did that, you know, when he made a song, if he was that good, you know, at expanding his mind. But it seemed like there was rock songs, a lot of those, uh, sometimes, you know, I, I mean, I can do it all the time. But one of the possible, you know, scientific explanations is if somebody is always listening, like they're going down the road, music's low, or they just hear it, and there's like a fan, you know, and that's the fan now, you know, blowing, you know, loud, there should be some clouds also you should pay attention to, you know, because, I mean, we all have floaters. But you need to know what the sound of is of our whole life, of our heartbeat, 
of her body at the barest silence, you know, and you need to be able to listen during pure silence, you know, and be able to have a clear, no debris thinking mind, you know, when it comes to being a pure individual and being able to understand how it affected you and how it brought you to where you're at from listening to a song and it needs to be good for you, you know, and songs are very, very powerful, you know, and they are the works of science and God, you know, and God is in it, you know, but so is science also. So there will be a cloud that kind of scoops over it, you know, and this is what is coming out of the fan. So somehow there's little bits of things going on here. And when you're sleeping in bed, you know, you'll realize, you know, that there is a fan, you know, here. And you have to know that that small debris there actually is in the music. And all you have to do is pay attention to it to really wish it was there. And you got to know what it sounds like. And, you know, most of those songs, you know, they sound like... um it just sounds like a radio is right there, you know, playing it for you. And, you know, a lot of the time, you know, you could have like a country song where Willie Nelson's playing and he's got it where these notes are like this and then he's got these little, like a solo that rips across it right here, you know, a guitar solo. And then it rips across it right there and you know that a car would be here and it'd be like a theater here in like the 1950s, you know. And you just know how somebody did that guitar lick. And this is the original one here. But this is the one that was running simultaneously alongside of that one. And then when that other guitarist rips that solo, all of a sudden it kind of leads it and shifts the car into another dimension, you know, next to it, you know. So it's like that could be like a remainder of a Willie Nelson song that I listened to, you know, when I was a little kid, you know, that could have been on the country music station. And then all of a sudden when the fan was blowing, you know, and I was trying to, you know, I always slept, slept with the fan. I could hear it humming, you know, but it wasn't humming. You know, the fan was going, hmm, 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 but I'm sure they can, you know, I mean, little small particles. Yeah. And anyway, so it's like shave cream, you know, shaving cream. You know, after you finish shaving, you know, sometimes there's little plops of uh, shaving shit, you know, that fall into your tub. You know, that is what it reminds me of. And um, another thing, you know, um, is uh, probably listening to the bass only. You know, to figure out, you know, what that is doing. And, you know, obviously at its maximum... And it's, you know, probably minimum effect, you know, like some kind of threshold has to be found. You know, and it's almost like putting new life on Mars. Treble only. Seven mid only. But you got to make sure that, you know, it sounds different. Or just will it to, you know. You know, treble only, you know. Make sure that you find a threshold. And, you know, whatever goes past these thresholds is going to be like your high peaks. And, you know, you want to be able to have something that is going to stick out, you know, that you can understand. You know, and some people look at it to where the shit is under the shit, you know. So it's like, you know, instead of it being above, it would be under. So they're trying to take it out of it, you know, and that makes it silent. And that would that would be very hard to do to make a song seem normal after that. But you could, I mean, you have to, you can invent an idea and it can be applied. You just have to see how the music is played and find a way to um, do all this stuff, you know. When these songs reverse, come out full. You know, now you can understand what the song is doing and if it loves you or not. That's what I think is important because I love it too.
and I don't think there'd be anything bad in between us. You know, I mean, all the stuff I've made backwards, it's probably been the biggest discovery in music history, you know, that I've had, especially, you know, and even if it was a subgenre, you know, in music, I, I think that it's important, and I think it has a lot to do with pieces of me from past lives, you know, or pieces of you, you know, that would be needed to see it, you know, first, or scientists, or something that was crucial information that had to be known. And I always look at time. I have eternal life in there somewhere in the song. I know it works, you know, because, I mean, if you pass a burning torch, flame, you know, to another one, and there's oil, you know, and this one has burning, and this one has burning, you know, this one has the oil, and it tosses the flame in there, you know, that flame from that torch, you know, that is the same flame with all the celebrations and everything, still burning, you know, is what I try to achieve. And that's why a song should be eternal if you can. You could also try this. Try making an internal song that is a full um, torch oil, you know, or what you could call an Olympic song. You know, and it's got to sound, I mean, it doesn't have to sound good to be an eternal song. But um, as far as me and Eminem preference goes, I mean, I'd say that, you know, I have different preference. You know, I think every person has a different preference. But I'd say that um, that one song, you know, we're the ones who made you, was another good efference. And here's another one, is a sex Listen, make sure you listen to it while you have sex and um, listen, like, I think the best time to listen to a song, to really make it eternal, you know, could be, you know, to listen to it when you have sex and before and after, you know, and during. And then, you know, you could even have it to where, you know, a song says certain things here, certain here and certain here, kind of like... Um, Kind of like green, yellow here, and red, you know, and be like yellow light and red light and green, you know, and then when you lay in bed, you know, um, you know, it's almost like you could take it and you could be like, well, this is a good sign to get with this person and it's a bad one to get with this one, you know, and that this one is... Well, all right, but, you know, we're already doing this one, so red, you know, or green or whatever. And, you know, you can even put little Y shapes, you know, in your music, and you can say, this is a choice here, and this is the choice here. And it could be, you know, but that's sex, you know. And another thing you could do is even, you know, masturbate while you're making music, you know, male or female. I mean, you can use your hand. Or, you know, I mean, sometimes just doing this and twitching is masturbating, you know, because somebody's looking at that hand and they're thinking that it's sexual. You know, it could be someone else that I don't want to be.